Hello, and I'm back for another installment of Let's Learn to Make Something. So today on the docket is paper piecing. Now paper piecing is a way that you can color by number with fabric in a piece that's kind of geometrically drawn. Uh, you might have also heard the term stitch and flip. Well, this is also a stitch and flip technique. Now, normally paper piecing is also foundation piecing, but the uh, differentiation is that with paper piecing, you actually are stitching on paper. And then ultimately when the block is complete, when the quilt is complete, then all the paper is ripped out it's quilted and on it goes. Foundation piecing is usually, it can be paper, but sometimes it's something that's not removable. So uh, muslin, very thin gauze, stuff like that. So there are lots of uh, patterns that we have here at Bernina of Naperville uh, that are paper piecing and they go on a shelf and unless you really feel comfortable with it sometimes it gets passed by but it's really fun it's a great way to make stuff that's very tedious looking look beautiful so let's get started so you're gonna need a few things here before you get started first of all you're gonna need a pattern and I have several patterns here. This is an Allison Glass pattern. It's called Alternative. Now this pattern isn't necessarily strictly paper piecing. You can piece this with traditional methods, but she does give you paper piecing instructions to make the X block. So there's an X block and there's a plus block. The plus block is done with more traditional piecing methods, but this is a very easy um, block to get started, this X. And so that's what we're gonna stitch first. Then there's also patterns like this. Now this pattern is the Atomic Starburst Quilt quilt from Violet Craft and this one is really super cute. I love the mid-century modern look and these little stars are all paper pieced so it gives you a much easier attainable thing if you're just doing one pad one block again and again and again and then it sews into a block. So this is another one that you might consider doing for your first paper piece design. So Allison Glass has paired with Juicy Juice and does these little mini, mini, mini quilts. So this is a mini hexagon, and this mini hexagon is like mind-blowing if you ask me, but it's really easy. You just need a lot of tiny little pieces. Now, we're not gonna do this one in the demonstration today. We have another project that we're gonna do where we show you how to do the tiny ones, but I just wanted to show you kind of easy, intermediate, and difficult. So this would be the aspiration project here. So to get started, you're going to need some other tools, and there are a few different rulers. There's the add a quarter ruler, and this is a 6 inch length, and then there's also a 6 inch length and a 12 inch length. That one is going to be nice for this larger quilt that or quilt block that we're doing next. Next item that you're going to need is a rotary cutter. And the rotary cutter that I'm using is the uh, Tula Pink with the oil slick design. You're also going to need some sort of card. Now, I can't think of a better use of a Bernina of Naperville store brochure than to do it, than to use it with this paper piecing exercise. So, and then, um, you know, you might need a little bit of scissors cut some wild pieces. Honestly, when you're doing paper piecing, the initial cuts that you're making don't have to be very accurate. That's where the lines and the paper and everything come into play. So I'm going to start by showing you how to make the X block in this quilt pattern here. And you can see there's an X block and then the cross block and there are instructions in the pattern, but I think it's good to kind of go through this hands-on. So this is the pattern that is in the, this is a loose piece that's in the pattern. And I broke this down to kind of initially get some of the pieces cut. So for the side triangles like this, it's a seven inch square cut in half on the diagonal. For these pieces here and here, it's going to be a five inch piece cut in half on the diagonal and then just cut two and a quarter strips for the X's and that's what's going to be needed. What you need to do first is it, you can trace this pattern onto your own paper using a pencil and ruler. That is not very efficient. You could also take this pattern to your local copy center 
and make copies. You'll need to make 30 copies of this because this is just this pattern that we're looking at right here is just one half of the X block. So you'll need to make 15 of these. However, if you find yourself in a quarantine and you're trying to sew and you don't have access to a printer that is large enough to print something bigger than eight and a half by 11, you could do what I did. And I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So I made a copy, but I had to copy two ends of that material of that uh, template and then tape it together. So I got the whole piece of my template. And then I happen to have a lot of butcher paper on the roll. I use this a lot for um, drafting garment patterns and things like that. And then I actually cut several pieces that are just a little bit larger than my template. And this is just plain butcher paper. And I piled several layers together. And now I'm going to line these up. And I'm going to take these to my sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch right on top of those lines. And yes, I'm not going to use thread in the top and I'm not going to use any thread in the bottom, but I do have a fancy little machine with all these warning buzzers and everything on it, but I turned the warning buzzers off. So and I want to show you how easy it is to kind of make your own copies. Now you might have to do these in a few different batches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to unthread my machine. And now I'm going to make sure I have everything piled up. So all of my, and I have a denim size 90 needle in the machine. And I'm just following the lines in this template. When I get to the end, I'm going to use my freehand system to lift and pivot. And I'm going to go all the way around first, around the perimeter. And then I'm going to come back and do the other lines. All right. And then I'm going to go to the outer bit and just follow the quarter inch guide. Now, this would actually be the cutting line once your block is completely made. And then lift the needle, lift your foot, and let's go back to the drawing board. And you can see there I've got my perforations that will go as our stitching line. All right, now that we have everything that we need, I went ahead and I pre-cut for my different triangles. And we're going to make two blocks and sew them together because you're going to make all of your blocks sew them together, then remove the paper. So here is one of my triangles, and I, I cut this to be a little bit larger than I needed. But there's one piece. And here's another piece that's going to go just there. And then I even have my strips. Now, I didn't cut my strips to length. I just cut a strip. But I'm just laying out everything here. And then I've got another color that I'm going to put up here, like that. And then I'll have another piece of the lime that goes down here like this. So one thing to keep in mind, I'm going to just put these materials over here to the side, is that your paper foundation, I mentioned that it's a little bit like paint by number. It's definitely like paint by number because you have it numbered. So the first piece that we're going to put down is piece number one, and it's labeled right there just like that. And then the next piece will be two, the next piece will be three, four, five. And that's how we're going to sew this together. So we're going to line this up, making sure that we have enough of this material hanging over for our seam allowances. And then we're going to take our ruler. And I'm going to go ahead and use the long ruler for this demonstration, because I'm going to have some long seams on this one. 
And this is where we take the material in our pattern and we flip it over and we this is the next piece that we're going to sew here so i'm going to take my store brochure which is a very nice thickness to do this fold my paper over on itself use this ruler this add a quarter which has a little lip and it meets right in there like that and just make sure that i have that i'm starting with a quarter inch seam allowance just like that now you probably also were noticing that i have a light up board well, these light up boards are fantastic because when I put that initial piece of fabric under there and I have this light up board, I can really see exactly what I'm doing here and I can see exactly where I'm putting that foundation piecing. All right, so this is the next side that I want to put something on. And I want to make sure that I extend my piece at least as long as the next piece I'm stitching it to so that when I flip it over it's also going to cover this whole piece here so that's why I like to have little scissors handy nearby and I'm just going to rough cut that I'm going to stitch I'm going to hold the okay so I do need to thread the machine again because I was sewing with no thread to perforate my templates and you should always thread your machine with your presser foot up so that the thread gets down into the tension disc. So now we're going to turn this piece over and stitch with the paper side up. And we're going to stitch right on this line because we're going to put the next fabric here, which we're going to stitch and we're going to flip that green fabric right over. Now a good idea when you're doing paper piecing is to lower your stitch length. So I'm lowering my stitch length to about two millimeters because that'll make it easier for the paper to peel off at the end. And then I'm going to use my cutting feature to cut. Next time, you just finger press and now if we look over here turn our light board on we can see that indeed we have covered that whole piece that whole shape there so now i can take my brochure flip it over use my add a quarter ruler wedge that into place and cut the extra piece off I'm also going to do this on the other side because if we look here, oops, this is the three. So this is the next piece I'm going to add. So I want to line up my brochure here, flip the piece over, line up my add a quarter ruler, and then trim this excess off. And now I'm going to take my green strip again, flip it over, and line it up. And just like I did before, I want to line this up so I will, when it flips over, I'm going to cover everything. So that means this is going to be need to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to cut my piece, give myself a generous tail down there so that when I flip over, I cover this whole piece next to it. So let's go back to the machine. And don't forget, we're always sewing with the paper side up. Here, I'm going to stitch, finger crease, and flip. Turn it back over. And you can see I have clearly covered my whole piece here. So now my next side, I'm just, I just always trim at this point, make everything neat. And you might want to have a little waste catcher next to you because this, you get a lot of little strippy scraps around you when you do paper piecing. Okay, so the next piece that we need to add is piece four.
and piece four goes down here. And that's going to be my little triangle piece like this. So I'm going to line this up like so. And now we're going to take that to the machine and stitch. Now we're going to add the piece to the next side. And that one is going to be a piece that looks just like this. And so we're going to line this up like so, and we're going to do the same thing. I want to flip this over and trim. And this is where you might use a regular ruler, like, you know, just one of your normal square rulers. And we're going to line the finish line, which is the inside line, up with our quarter of an inch mark. And we're going to cut around. Now, when I put those little triangles on there, I could have been a little bit more generous with my squares when I cut them out, truth be told. So I'm going to have to be careful when I sew this block together. I'm just going to turn the light off on this. I think you'll see better. But one of the reasons in paper piecing why you leave the paper on until the very, very last step is because you might need to use it for, more, for a more accurate seam allowance. So let me show you what I'm talking about. See how there's just a little paper showing there? It's not going to be a complete, accurate quarter-inch seam allowance, but that's okay. I'm good with that. Now I'm going to give this a little pressing at the iron. So now I'm going to make another one of these using my perforated piece. Now, the perforated piece doesn't have any um, numbers on it, so I'm going to have to draw those on. So we had one, two, three, four, and five. Now, as you do this, you're going to get used to the order and everything, but a new person to this technique, you definitely want to write the numbers and follow the numbers. So our next piece is going to be this piece right here. And so remember, we're going to add this not to the side with the numbers, but the opposite side here. And we're going to use our glue stick to stick our fabric in place so it doesn't wiggle on us. And now we're going to follow the instructions to cover piece number two. And take that back to the machine. Don't forget to sew with the paper side up. Line this up, and now we're just going to follow the dots. It was funny, earlier when I didn't have any thread in my machine when I was doing my test piece, <laughs> I actually was using the thread cutter anyway because I'm such a creature of habit. All right, so now we're ready to do piece number three. And remember, as we go from piece to piece, we want to check things. So I'm going to cut the excess off here. And as we go through this demo, you can see my workspace here is getting dirtier and dirtier. <laughs> well, maybe not dirty, more like fuzzier and fuzzier. Fabric. It's a fuzzy, dusty business, everybody. I'm not sure, but 
Camilla is in the back room and I can hear her snoring and it's really distracting. All right, so we're ready to sew on piece three. So we're going to line that up and line this up here like so. And like I said earlier, I'm going to cut off a little piece here. And we just want to work with the smaller bits. So let's go over to the machine and stitch this down. And cut. All right, so now I'm stitching, flipping, finger pressing, and then I'm going to give a little trim, lining this up here like so. Lining this up. Do the same with the other side. And trim. And now we're going to add pieces four and pieces five. So I want to hold this up together because this is the the mirror block that we're making and I want to put a purple a darker purple piece there like this one there we go and now I want to put oop nope nope goes the other way I'm going to put that one down here and I want to put that one up there like that now the next one to put on would be number four so I'm going to line this up like so and then we're going to stitch. Just making sure that I'm lining everything up, turning it over, and stitching from the paper side up. Now the final step, oop. Now the final step is going to be to sew our pieces together. All right, so I still have to trim this piece down like I did the other piece. And I'm going to line my ruler up, lining it on the quarter inch of that first inside row of the perforation. Doing the same thing on the other sides. Okay. And so now we have an X piece that's going to go together. Now here's the beauty of doing this. We are simply going to line everything up with the seams being just perfect. And then we're going to stitch down that perforation line because that's our quarter of an inch. So those of you that are a little fearful of a quarter of an inch, this is the perfect project for you because you're really not relying so much on a quarter of an inch as you are the lines on your template. So I'm going to line this up making sure that you can see here that this folded piece here is just on top of that folded piece there because it's important that these little buggers line up. So I'm going to pin this into place and then I'm just going to make sure that this is happening on the other side here, that we've got a nice little spot that's lined up together. And then I'm going to have everything together, and now I'm going to stitch.
And don't sew over your pins. Remove them before you get to them. And I am normally not somebody who presses the seams open, but in this application, I'm going to. So there it is. So we have a finished paper piece block, and this paper doesn't get removed until the entire block is stitched into the quilt. So leave all of the paper. And this can just go aside in this project that several of us here at the store have been working on for a long time. So yay, one of those blocks is complete. And I'm keeping out my ruler, and I'm keeping out my rotary cutter, and my mat, and all of these good things. And it's time to start another one. So this is from the Atomic Starburst Quilt by Violet Craft. And we've almost got our store sample one um, finished, but I'm just going to make a new one just in case. Or no, actually I'm using the Starburst for something with flamingos on it. So I tried to find a very flamingo pink and a cream color fabric. Now the cutting I did for this block, first of all, you can see here, this is how it looks when you copy the pattern that's in the, copy the paper that's out of the pattern. Then I actually, in order to do my paper piecing, I trim those down to more manageable sizes. And in this one, just like we made that other one, we had two halves. Well, in these, we have two halves that ultimately get joined together. So we're going to work with this piece first. And we're going to see how we are doing these. So the first piece that we're going to do, and this is going to be hard to see for the camera, so I'm just going to rewrite. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And so that's how we want to put our pieces on. So our piece number one is going to be a piece of white material. And I'm going to turn this over, and I'm just going to, and see how I've cut my white material into, you know, more manageable sized pieces. And I'm just going to cut a hunk of this white fabric off, just like that. No measuring, just cutting a hunk. And now I'm lining that up. I'm going to need the use of my glue stick. Gonna line that up into place, let that dry while I put the cap back on the glue stick. And now we're gonna turn this upside down. So I need to put a piece here next. So I'm gonna use my store brochure. Oh, it's right here. To line that up right on the line for piece number two. I'm gonna use my Add a quarter ruler again, and I'm trimming. Now, this is also where I can turn it around to the other side and trim the other side while I'm here. And cut. And now I'm going to add a piece here, so I'm going to turn this over. And this is the piece that I'm going to add, so I'm just going to trim a more manageable size, line this up, and I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. Okay, remember we're sewing with the paper side up. And I'm going to stitch right down this line and cut. And then use my fingers to press and flip it over. Beautiful. Now at this point, I could also trim, but this is number nine. This is going to be the last piece, so don't sew anything onto this side yet. What I'm doing is just trimming. And now three is the next piece that we want to put on. 
And I'm just trying to see if maybe, just maybe, yeah, that's going to work. So I'm going to use this little snippy from the other side to stitch. You can see what we're using really tiny pieces here. Okay, sewing with the paper side at the top. We're going to go right along this side right here. And cut. It's very easy to accidentally misalign, so that's why you want to really pay attention to what side you're on in the order of these pieces. Okay, giving that a little finger press. And now piece number four is the next one. And that's going to be a white piece because that's our background. And now we have like another tr somewhat triangular piece. So I'm just going to cut a hunk again. And then I'm going to line this up, just testing it out to make sure it'll cover. Looks like it will. All right, here we go. Oh, my fabric got flipped. So let's let's cover that again. So we're going to Lining this up. All right, now if I make a mistake during this demo, I'm going to show you how to fix it. But I'm not planning on making any. I'm just saying, just in case I make a mistake. All right, so we're back. And now we're flipping, and now it's covering up that piece right there. So now as we turn it around. Okay, once you made that um, stitching, we're going to come back again, and we're going to continue to just line this up, move our piece over, use our add-a-quarter ruler, and cut. And then we're going to leave that other piece to cut at another time. So now I just need to go back to my material here. I need a longer piece this time, one about like that. So I'm going to just cut that and line this up. Turn it over and stitch and flip at the machine. And don't forget, you always want to sew the very next side. And now we go back to the drawing board again. And we finger press. Then we're going to turn it over. And we're going to cut. And make sure that you're folding over the correct line for your cutting. Because we just stitched that one, so we wanted to fold over on that one. And now we're going to add our white material again. Alrighty. Sewing on the other line up here from the point. And cut. We're going to use our fingers to do our pressing. 
and then we're going to cut. This time, this is our next one in line right here. We're on piece number seven. And trim. And then I'm just going to trim down this piece too, just because we don't need all of that in our way. All right, so piece number seven is going to be a pink piece. And we're going to line that up just like that and go to our machine. And don't forget, we're stitching on this very first line on this side of the seven and cut. Now we're going to stitch and flip just like we've been doing. And we're going to trim. Trim on the side next to the eight. We're almost done this first top piece. And now I can use one of my little smaller white bits to cover up this eight piece. And that's the nice idea with this is that, you know, we get all of these little tiny scraps that we collect, but at some point in our project with paper piecing, we can probably use them, particularly if you do one of those um, Alice in Glass and Juicy Juice projects because they use such tiny, teeny, weeny little pieces. Okay. All right, we have one more piece on this. So like I said, we can use these little discarded pieces from when we used some other ones here. Okay, so now I've got this lined up and I'm gonna stitch my last piece on this top part of the starburst. Now, we're gonna make two of these, so when I come back, I'll have two completed, completed pieces. We want to sew with the paper on top. All right, and then we flip this piece over. So now, the one thing that I do want to do is we want to eliminate some of this bulk. So we're going to come back, flip, I'm going to trim off some of this stuff here. And we're going to come back and trim off some of this stuff here. Which I had done. Okay, so now once everything is pressed, and I'm just going to escape over here to the iron just for a second. And I flattened all those pieces down. Now I'm going to trim, and then I'll make a second one, and then we'll, I'll show you how to stitch them together. So I'm just lining this little guy up, the ridge right here on the finish line, and then adding a quarter to the border. And adding a quarter to the border. So now we just need one more of those. Look a little bit weird now, but they'll look really pretty once we sew them together. So we're going to line them up, seam allowance to seam allowance, point to point. And you can see here that as this sews, we've got a little dog ear hanging out there. And then there's another one down here at the bottom. That's okay. This is going to look beautiful once we sew it together. And I'm going to sew on this finish line right here 
and I'm not pinning. Stitch, 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 cut, and then we'll have our big reveal at the drawing board. And so there's our star. There's all our paper, and remember, the paper doesn't get removed until this is in its final project. Now, I'm going to be making a little flamingo welcome sign with this in it, so I don't have too many pieces like this that I'm making, but anyway, you can see our little starburst. It's beautiful. I really do hope you learned something, and uh, don't forget to uh, visit Bernina of Naperville's channel on YouTube. You can find it just by searching Bernina of Naperville, and if you could like, comment, and subscribe, that would be fantastic, and if you want to know when we add new things to our channel, just click the little bell, and then you'll get alerts every time we upload a video. So for now, I'm Gail Schleyman, owner, co-owner of Bernina of Naperville, and I'm signing off, and I hope to see you in the future for other tutorials. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.